Hi everybody and a big welcome to CDH3 gameplay. This time me and Redrick and Pontus are joined by Tangelo. Hello, how's it going? Hi, I'm playing the Rani today. Pretty well positioned to do well against some of the mid-range options that exist today. Basically, the longer the game goes, the more enchantments the Rani makes, the more things are goaded, the more clues I get, um, and the more damage I'm dealing to my opponents. So I wouldn't call it an anti-meta deck, but I would say it's really good against the mid-range meta that we're dealing with right now. Today, I'm bringing Corvold. Uh, this list won, I believe, Chaos recently. Yeah, it's just standard seat to your dragon. You do the dark side stuff, you do the nasty stuff, you do the rich stuff, I think. Pretty sweet. I'm playing Ian's Flanderis. The Revi Band deck that is trying to use various different tutors to find the Wandering, which will convert into an enormous amount of card draw for the Revi, and then figure out some cool of win that you could basically create with Band. Hey folks, it's me. I am playing Yorn because the Winter Solstice is nigh, so it should be close to that by the time you see these games. Um, yeah, I've played this deck every once in a while. It's basically a stacks deck with uh, Salted Colors. It's got some, I guess, kind of corner case cards like uh, Savor the Moment, which works really well with Yorn. But other than that, it follows different sort of NOS strategies to eventually break parity. Let's take the first seven. So I don't have any card draw, but I have plenty of ramp. Uh, Orcish Bow Masters could be pretty devastating against if I use as core world gets online quickly but again the card draw isn't there I have one land that I can untap being first it is interesting although I th I'm afraid if I put cover the flowers down nobody's going to play anything but I could still get out a creature as a result I don't know I think I'm just gonna go for a slightly faster let's look at our second seven now this second one is very interesting because I could get the one ring out on turn two but I don't really have that much otherwise like go to Drake on turn two there's just a bit of clunkiness with them. So we don't, I mean, Imperial Steel is essentially a deck card right now. So I'm going to go to six. So I could probably go deeper in the tank with these, but I have Mystical Tutor. I'm the first player. I have Jeweled Lotus so I can get out Yorn on turn one. And I can also use Mystical Tutor being in my turn to find something more interesting. Winter Orb comes down. That's really good uh, because I have two islands. And then if I get back to basics online as well, like we're going to be in good shape. I mean, Drevi's probably not going to care about these things. The only deck card really in my hand, I think, is Death Rite Shaman, but perhaps I'll draw a piece some interaction or uh, some kind of ramp spell from there so i'm gonna go ahead and keep this one and i'll go ahead and ship it to the next player i do need to also put something away so what is that i think for this we can probably put away death right shaman because we don't know what's on the bottom of our life or we don't know what's next so i'm going to go with actually do i want to do that i mean two pieces here that's pretty good let's just put this way yep let's do that so this is a hand i have to say i really like this is typical of me i see a turn one fish and I go happy. But there are some other cool parts with this hand besides the fish. It's kind of sad to have a fish and that you get a mental misstep and you're out. But we have cards in this hand that will be decent even though the fish would theoretically be counterspelled. So we can, for example here, do Mana Vault, turn one, then the Signet, and then Sylvan Library, turn one, instead of the fish, potentially. And then we play the fish next turn to have more mana while we're able to pay for the upkeep, while we're sitting there with Sylvan Library at the same time. So we could start with Sylvan Library and fish the next turn. Looking at my opponents, there is a bunch of them that might burst out a few rocks early on. Yorn, I'm guessing, is gonna throw down like a door. Corvold is probably gonna try to ritual out quite a lot. I'm first before Corvold, so there could be an argument for going turn one fish against Corvold because that's gonna theoretically feed me quite a bit. And Tangelo is Grixis, so I think he is also going to ritual out a tiny bit. So I think I'm gonna go for the turn one fish. Regardless, I am keeping this hand because I'm not throwing away a fish. It's only one lander, which is kind of sad, but we have some card draw, so we should be able to draw into some lands. Depending on what do I draw, I might change my mind and maybe go Sylvan Library first, but the most likely scenario here is uh, turn one Remora. And then we will see how we develop forward from that. Let's draw a seven. So this being a no lander seriously kills it. Yeah, let's just go to seven. So to be perfectly honest, I'm not a seasoned Corvold player, but this looks pretty solid. This is a turn two Corvold. We also can play a fetch land post casting Corvold. I have a crop so it's a Corvold into draw two. We don't we have breach in hand, but breach isn't really a payoff for this hand. But I still think this is solid enough to just keep. Uh, we're in the stacks of pods, so Corvold beats might actually be kind of 
a game plan. Uh, Dockside is, in, is probably not going to be that fed. I would like expect like a Dockside for four on turn three. We're going last. Dockside is a bit stronger in general, but yeah, I, I think just going for turn one Corvold and going to beat Town is actually going to be a kind of relevant strategy in this spot. Might be killed. That would be sad, but yeah. I'm not I'm I'm right. Let's see if it works. And core players, please tell me if this is a trap keep. I suspect it might be, but it feels pretty solid for the pod. So yeah, please comment and tell me if I am dumb. I appreciate it. Let's go to a match. Draw card for turn. Land for turn is a snow covered island. Cast Jeweled Lotus. Crack Jeweled Lotus for three green. Cast Yorn. Oh, cool. and that I have five cards in hand and I'll pass turn. I'm gonna take my turn and draw a card. That got great. Tropical Island into Soul Ring. I will tap it and cast a Talisman of Curiosity. Tap this for a blue and lose a life. So I can cast a Mystic Remora. Response to Fish, I will tap Snow Covered Island, cast Mystical Tutor. Grab and Force Will, put it on top of my library. And then I pass the turn as Fish here resolves. All right, we will draw. Play a Steam Vents, shocking it in. A two. I mean, since Mons is resolved, here's the Mystic Romora. Surely mine will resolve, right? No, you may draw. Uh, I move to end step. That's very Go to my turn. Land for turn will be a Bayou. I'll tap it to cast a Birds of Paradise. First of all, my Dockside call was pretty bad, <laughs> it looks like. Second of all, casting Mana Crypt here is kind of contentious. I can really see both sides of the coin here. There's two fish in play. Mons fish will never leave play because he has a lot of mana. And Tangelo might lose his fish over time. Both Fishes would probably be online on my next turn still, either way. So casting Crypt now denies both of them one extra card on their next untaps, their next turn. The upside of casting Crypt is we have two stacks decks and one deck that is kind of stacksy in the Rani. It's not really stacks, but I, I don't know what it runs. It could run something weird. So there could be a position where Rhetoric plays Stasis, me. I don't know. Uh, or Mons just plays Rural Flow. I guess that's in his deck. And Rural Flow would be very awkward because then you can't go Crypt Corvold, which we would want to. I will play it safe and not feed the fishes. But I just want this to be in the video for when I get Rule of Lord and I'm sad next turn. So see you by then. But for now, I pass. We will untap and draw the card that you all knew was there. Land for turn will be another snow-covered island. I tap two islands and cast Winter Orb, not paying for either fish. Winter Orb resolves. I will move to combat and send Yorn at Mons for three, untapping these two islands from the trigger. I will take three damage. And with that, three cards in hand, I pass the turn. Let's begin by untapping and using this to pay for the fish. Then draw a card. Let's play this Misty Rainforest. Sacrifice that. Finding a Tundra. So we did see Redrick tutor for a Force of Will with his Mystical Tutor. And I have a Transmute Artifact in my hand, which I kind of want to use now to find the One Ring, which would make me very happy right now. But I think he's going to force my Transmute Artifact. So I think we're going to put Sylvan Library into play instead and play it safer, kinda. I'm gonna tap this soul ring and cast a mana vault, floating a colorless mana from this, tap this for green. Fish can draw a card from the mana vault and then fish can draw a second card from the Sylvan library. And then I pass the turn. Untap, upkeep, paying for fish, and go to my draw I'm just gonna cast a Mox Opal. Fish can draw, discarding a Fairy Mastermind and a Muddle in this mixture. Go to my turn. Land's return will be a Scalding turn. So here, I can still play Corvold. I really want to. The problem is <laughs> Rhetoric tutor for Force of Will. Corvold is 100% getting Force of Will every day. He could not do it, and there, there like, is arguments to not do it technically, but I know Rhetoric. He, 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 would, he would do it, <laughs> 100%. So Corvold isn't really an alternative for me, sadly. Or it is, but I'm just running straight into a counterspell, letting my two fish opponents draw two cards because I'm casting Crypt and the Force will getting cast. So what I'm considering doing is just passing. It's really sad because like I'm not doing anything. Like my alternative to casting Corvold is just doing nothing, which really sucks. There is an argument to like cast Corvold and then have animated up, which is like fine. I don't think that's a very good play though. It's like something I could do, but like then I'm stuck with Corvold as an admit dead target, and I don't really like that. But this kind of like chicken race. Tangelo lost tempo due to his fish not drawing the cards he needed. He doesn't have a second land. He might have a gas hand if he gets a second mana. You never know with these fish keeps. 
But I feel like I'm getting the most set back by casting Coral here. Mons is kind of just running away with the game, so I, I, we would kind of need to keep up with him. But I don't think Frederick is going to buy me casting a Coral as part of that plan. So I actually think I'm going to be as sad as to just pass here, which really sucks. But yeah, tutoring an open Force of Will, me having an expensive commander, me being the one casting that commander, yeah, that's just never going to resolve. So, but hey, I, I was super wrong about Dockside, right? Uh, yeah, this, I should have really gone for a Dockside. I really should have. Oh well, I'm just passing, being sad. My return will be a snow-covered forest, and I will proceed to combat, going to attack Tangelo, which will untap Yorn as well. I don't no blocks, that's fine. Three cards in hand, pass. Going to my turn, untap, paying for fish with a soul ring, then activating Suva Library, adding three cards to my hand, and we're actually going to put this card back and lose four life. Land drop, waterlog grove. I'm going to cast Darevi Imperial Tacticianer. It resolves and I will untap this Tundra. And then I pass the turn. So I'm going to untap. I was really hoping I would draw at least one land. The rationale being if I draw even a blue land, I can Alchemist Retrieval, save my Remora, and keep digging for something. But... I guess this is what you get for keeping a risky hand. So, Remora dies, and I'll go to my draw step. Here's a land for turn, Verdant Catacombs. That's a really lucky top deck. Love to see it. Crack Verdant Catacombs, finding a Underground Sea. I'm going to put a Dark Ritual on the stack. Uh, fish may draw. Four mana, I would like to cast the One Ring. Yes, Fish Trigger. I'm going to respond to the One Ring with a Force of Negation, pitching a Wargate to it. That's standable. It's countered. I pass the turn. Go to my turn. And since Rhetoric is sandbagging his first word for specific me, I feel like I'm just gonna pass my turn. That's a terrible card. We will pass through the main phase. We will go to combat and attack Mons with Yorn. Trigger Yorn. I know blocks. I free damage. Great. All right, four cards in hand, pass. My turn, I will untap. I am not paying for a fish, it can go to the grave, but then we will trigger the Sylvan Library, put three cards into our hand, and toss this to the top of the deck and lose. Nah, it's actually, let's drop that one too. I think I'm gonna need my life. Playing Marsh Flats as land drop, sacrificing that. Finding a Savannah. I'm gonna cast Transmute Artifact. Okay, likely you're going for the One Ring, so I'm going to pitch back to basics and play Force of Will. But everything is part of my master plan. So we are going to tap this and cast a Path to Exile on Yorn. He can go to Exile. Okay, Yorn goes to Exile, or go to Command Zone, so I'll go find a basic. Found a snow-covered swamp, comes in tapped. And now that you can't pay for Flusterstorm anymore, I'm going to fluster the Force of Will, losing a life. So in the end, I get my... Transmute artifact to resolve, and we are going to tap this, float one colorless mana, use four colorless mana, sacrifice the mana vault, and find the one ring. We are then going to tap the one ring, put a burden counter on it, and draw a card. Then we are swinging at Pontus with the Revi for two damage. No blocks, take two. Then I'm going to get a trigger from the Revi to untap the one ring. Perfect synergy, and. Uh, yeah, might as well tap it now, put the burden counter, draw two cards. And while we're at it, let's put this Chromox into play and pitch this Legolas thing. And then we pass turn. I'll untap an underground C and draw. I'll play a luxury suite. This is going to take a while, but hopefully it takes up eventually with that one ring in play. Here's a Blood Chief Ascension. If that resolves, I just pass the turn. Go to my turn. I will cast a mana. I will exile a Simeon Spirit Cane for red. I'll use that red to cast a red flame, making two red. One red floating, cast a Corvold. I'm going to respond with a Mind Break Trap. You have done uh, mana crypts, a right of Flame and Corvold is your thirds. Yeah, so go away with your Corvold. It's very funny how I was thinking about not casting Red Flame to play around Mind Break Trap, but I decided there isn't any Mind Break Traps. Uh, so as I decided that, the Mind Break Trap fizzles and my Corvold resolves. <laughs> Corvold is going to exile and I will just continue crying and pass. Take my turn, untap this land. My turn is a Polluted Delta. I will tap it, bang a life, and fetch. Fetching Underground Sea, I will then tap 
these two for Demonic Tutor. So this is a little tricky because I could get Orcish Bowmasters in response to him drawing cards, which would allow me to ping Derevi most likely. I could get Collector Oof, which would probably hurt him even more. Toxic Deluge would be interesting. But I think Orcish Bowmasters is probably the Gilded Drake is also something interesting because that would allow me to take his commander and then start untapping my own stuff. But I think I'm going to go with Orcish Bowmasters because we're assuming that other people will start drawing cards eventually and he'd have to deal with it anyways so i think that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and grab that card i have two cards in hand i'll go ahead and pass the turn to you mons i'm going to go to my turn and untap a few things and lose two life to the one ring before you move to your draw step i'm going to tap two to cast orcish bowmasters i'm going to respond to the orcish of bowmaster by tapping the one ring putting a bird encounter on it, drawing three cards before that thing resolves. Then I'm gonna tap this and cast an Ephemerate on my Derevi, Flickering Derevi, which means that the one ring will untap and I will tap it again to draw four more cards. And then I have no further effects against the, the Bowmasters. I'll do one point of damage to you or to Derevi and then I'll mass from there. Now that Orkish is in play, I am not going to use the Sylva Library anymore. I'm going to cast a Lotus Petal. I'm going to play a Mana Confluence. I'm going to cast a Spell Seeker. I'm gonna find a crop rotation and put that into my hand, casting a Noble Hierarch, tapping Mana Confluence for a Bird of Paradise. And then I pass the turn. On your end step, uh, trigger Blood Chief Ascension, getting a quest counter. And then I'll go to my end tap. I will just pass the turn. Untap, roll for Crypt, I'll just damage. Roll to six, no damage. Draw for turn. I will fetch. Finding a Badlands, tapping three, casting a Praetor's Grasp, targeting Tangelo. I will find and cast a Dockside using the Colors Floating and my Birds of Paradise. Dockside it to be, making 9 treasures. I'm going to respond to your trigger by sacrificing this to cast Crop Rotation. Sacrificing Mana Confluence. Finding Gaia's Cradle. Then I have no further effects against the Dockside it to be, so go for it. Make 8 treasures. I will cast a Mox Opal. I'll tap for 7 and cast a Corvold. Corvold resolves, it to be. I will sack the Dockside draw card. I will respond by pointing one point of damage at the Spellseeker. In response to that before Spellseeker dies, I will tap this for gre four green and cast the Court of Calling, convoking X equals much? X equals five. I don't think I have a creature in my deck that has five, but X equals five regardless. I'm going to find Fesh Duplicate. Now I'm gonna make this enter as a Orcish Bowmaster. And on the ETB, I'm gonna shoot at the other Orcish Bowmaster. This is gonna get rid of Orcish Bowmaster. And I'm gonna have a response versus a card drawing monster Corvold on the sta in board state here. So, Alchemist, I think... Presumably, I would be doing this in response... Well, I guess there's... Yeah, I can't respond to the... Duplicate's already in place, so I can't respond anymore. Um, yeah, so you don't have another black to cast... Uh, recast Spellmaster's Red Strike. Right, not right now, but you can cast it on his turn. Yeah, I can't really do anything to help the situation, sadly. I guess you could bounce his Bowmasters, but that would... That, that is, like... Yeah. That well, would no, be I'm, nice. I'm saying, I, I'm, I'm saying I bounce I bounce Rhetoric's Bowmaster to save it. Yeah. And then when Rhetoric replays his Bowmaster, it kills Bonza's Bowmaster, and then we have a Bowmaster in the face of Bonza's tomfoolery. Right, yeah. that's true. The, the, there's some value in that, at least. I was thinking I wanted to save this to bounce the One Ring. I don't know if that's the better play, and I hold on to it for that i'm not entirely sure i don't actually know how the deck wins it might be possible that it can win from infinite mana like with or without the ring being high it might be an instant speed line so it doesn't even care about bowmaster so there might be a case where it just doesn't matter at all so short answer in general i'm not sure what the right play is here i'm sorry <laughs> i wish i could help okay so to reiterate we pontus you're not going to crack another treasure this turn so that rhetoric can deal damage to you to get my blood chiefs up because if we get blood chiefs to two one on your turn and then if rhetoric can deal some damage to somebody we get it up to three i'm fine by in response to the bowmaster to be 
crack two treasures to be pinged once and kill the bowmasters. Right, that seems smart to me, at least. It's something we could do. And then we retrieve all Redrick's bowmaster and keep that up. Best of both worlds, uh, I guess. Th- that, that we can do as well. Okay, I think, that's, I think that's the play we have to make. So, in response to the ETB of flesh duplicates as the bowmasters, trying to kill the other bowmasters, I will crack two treasures for a green and a black and have two coral fears. Okay, so... I'll draw one card first and have two bowmaster triggers instead. That's, yeah, that's fine. Nice. I will point the Ogre Sport Masters at the copy of Ogre Sport Masters. And I will target mine on Pontus Birds of Paradise. The ping for Sol, and then I draw another card of Corvold. And per our plan, I will point that other Orcish Sport Master at, at point of damage at Pontus. Uh, I'll pay two, and sorry, Alchemist Retrieval bouncing Rhetoric's Sport Master. Okay, we're back to main phase on my turn. I'll use a green to cast a Crop Rotation, sacrificing this by you. Trigger Corvold. I'll put a counter on Corvold, and draw a card. Proposition results. Ancient Tomb. I'll tap it. Floating in Colless. Use my black floating. Cast the animated targeting the dock side. Animated results. I'll make a dock side. ETB. I'll make eight treasures, right? With my eight treasures, I will crack two of them, making a black and green, and draw two cards. One, two. I'll cast a Calling of the Week, sacrificing the Dockside. I'll hold priority on the Corval draw from this and cast a Noxious Rival targeting my, my animated to put it on the top of my library. Paying to life. I'll draw the card of Corval. I'll crack another treasure. Oh, I'll make the five, the four black mana of Calling of the Week. I'll use one black and a colorless to recast the animated to reanimate the Dockside. Make eight more treasures. I'll crack a treasure for red, draw a card. I'll use two black floating for a defense grid. I'll use a black and a green to cast a demonic tutor. Finding this card, I'll crack a treasure, draw a card for a black, use the black and the red, cast a unwell breach. I'll crack two treasures for two red, draw two cards. I'll cast a grinding station with those two mana. In response to the grinding station, I'll tap it to sacrifice mana crypts. And from here, I can present the loop by mill three and loop the mana crypt to make a bunch of colorless mana. And after a while, I can at some point swap that by sacrificing my own dock side because this isn't my dock side to mill even better. And then my kill condition will be a saw in half dual caster combo with Mayhem Devon in play, making infinite treasures with dock side and killing the table. So this line requires me to first have Mayhem Devon in play and a dock side, which I will be able to have. I've milled so much and draw so much, it's not a real problem. Really, really real problem. So what I'll do is I will cast saw in half, targeting my dock side, and in response to that, I will cast dual cast mage. The dual cast mage will eat to be copying the saw in half, making two dual cast mages. Both of them will eat to be and copy the saw in half. This way I will have infinite saw in halves. So I'll make infinite dual cast images. That's one once because it rounds up. And infinite dock side ETBs, which will be infinite treasures, which I can then sacrifice into main level. I will need to kill Corval with this line, but I do have a Technomancer to just kill him before I do this. And that way I will make infinite damage and kill the table. Good game. So just top decking the win there. Feels pretty good. Uh, for a long time, I was very really screwed, screwed that game. My only like one plan was to cast Corval, and when Rhetoric is tutored for Force of Will, I know that I won't get away with that. Even if I try to argue, I don't think he will trust me. So I just had to wait for a window, and then when I got my window, I played right into the Mind Rick Trap, which I even thought about not playing into. But better luck than good. Misplay and still top take win next turn. Feels great. Feels pretty bad having a politics discussion where I just have win in hand and need to pretend to work with the table but Pontus you know all of these situations where people are people are saying I don't trust you Pontus this might be the reason (laughs) the the thing is I'm more honest than most people in these discussions so if you think I'm a liar just reflect on how that yeah tells about everyone else (laughs) true I kept the risky opener Uh, that's all I have to say about that I had a one line hand into fish and then I'm like I had a dark writ one ring but no black mana for that so I had Uh, the Okay. retrieval to keep it to keep the fish around if i drew another blue blue land right and i could work off of that but uh we found the one ring it got countered so i'm not doing anything it was a timely thing i mean i figured someone would be going for dockside and you were drawing a bunch of cards and so i'm like okay what do i do with this but i think they ultimately I, I got distracted by the board state you were building up sometimes that could be its own illusion for like <laughs> sneaky plays sneaky plays sly plays i'm gonna i'm gonna call you sly pontus that's what i'm gonna call you in any case that's all for this time thank you for watching and see you in the next video